Well, good morning. Uh, thank y'all for joining us today for Senior Sunday. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Marcus. I'm the youth pastor here. Uh, I also have an expanded role this year where I'm an, an advisor to some of our other ministries like preteen, preschool, and kids. Uh, and so just real quick before we get into the, the scripture today, I do want to just kind of tell y'all, I guess, state of, of our ministries for going into this summer. I don't I try not to get caught up on numbers. Uh, I'm not a big numbers guy, and, and this is not to, uh, to gloat or, or be in competition. I just want to share, share some numbers with y'all so that you can see how God is moving in our ministries. So this summer, we're in just a few weeks actually, we're taking 19 high school students on a mission trip to Knoxville, Tennessee. Like I said, that's just in a, a few weeks. And then uh, we're taking 50 middle school and high school students to, to student camp in July. And then we're having our, and this one is, I'm, I'm excited about all of them, but this one's really cool. We're having our first ever preteen camp. Um, we have a preteen ministry, if you didn't know. And that thing is just blowing up. We cannot keep enough Bibles on hand. Um, there's so many of them, but right now there's 15 of them going to camp, and there's like close to 30 total kids, and that is uh, that is the current fourth and fifth, and it's going to transition into being fifth and sixth graders. But that thing is it's blowing up so much that we're actually building them a new a new area inside the student area. Uh, so FYI, if you get a text from me asking for help, uh, if I if I know you can swing a hammer, I'm probably going to be texting y'all. So. Um, and then kids camp, we got 12 kids going to kids camp, and that's amazing as well. And, but probably the, the best, uh, the or most important number is seven. So far this year, throughout those ministries, we, we had seven salvations. Yeah. And we're praying, we're praying that there's going to be more. There's going to be more that make that choice. Maybe it's this summer, maybe it's in a few months, or maybe it's on down the road. But we're praying and we're trusting that more will make the choice to passionately follow Jesus. And we have these seniors. And these seniors, this senior group is, is very special to me. Uh, nothing against previous groups. I love y'all too, or future groups. But this, this one is it's special to me and my wife. Um, six years ago, we started going to church here. And five years ago, I started helping in the student ministry, and almost four years ago, I, I came on staff. But this group, I met them when they were in middle school, most of them. A, a couple have joined us since, but most of these kids I've known since middle school. And so I've grown up in the college ministry with them. Uh, as they've went through, I, I've grown as a leader, and, and I've grown up with them. And these guys have... They've been there with me through a bunch of stuff. Uh, and they have served our ministry. They have served this church. They, they serve all over the place. Uh, they're constantly helping. And they're, when, I, when I know that we need something, they're the first ones that I call because I know that they're going to get it. They're gonna, and they're going to take care of it. And these kids, uh, they're also just a ton of fun. I mean, like, they can make anything fun. Uh, even an old church van and a merry-go-round and, you know, just, they can make anything fun. And this, this group, uh, I love watching them after service, if, if y'all, if you haven't noticed. They're always the last ones to leave. Like, they, they congregate, and then they go and spend, like, the next three hours together. Um, they just can't get enough of each other. They just love being with each other. And I want that to like they love Jesus, but they lo and they love being with each other. And I want that to infect the rest of our group. I want that to infect the rest of our. I want it to infect the rest of our church. Honestly, like it's just so cool to see. And so this group is very, very, very special to me. And so, you know, we sit here and um, I guess I'm going to ask for for y'all to interact with me here because that's kind of what I'm used to uh, sometimes with the youth, but. If you could give a piece of advice, maybe it's just a word or, or just a piece of advice to these seniors, um, what, what are some of these words, some of this advice that you would try to impart to them? What's that? 
Yeah? Anybody else? What? Follow your dreams, Follow your dreams? okay. So we could, we could probably keep doing this, and I encourage you to. Like, if you have advice to, to give to them, please do. I mean, that's, that's what you're here for, too. But uh, I think if we could all say one thing that we wish that they would have, it would be godly wisdom, right? Anybody with me? I mean, that's probably something that we all need, right? I know I need it, um, so maybe I'm just talking to, to me and the seniors today, but godly wisdom. I think it's something that they need, but we all need as well. Um, it's something that King Solomon asked for, all right? King Solomon asked God for it. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I learned a lesson from the last time I preached, bring water. It helps. But um, so King Solomon, he's a teenager when he became king, and he is stressed out and he's freaking out over all the responsibilities that he has, all right, all the things that he has to do as a leader. And like I said, he's a teenager. And in 1 Kings chapter 3, we, we get this story and we see that Solomon asked God for wisdom, which was pretty wise of him, right? And God granted him his request. And Solomon actually authored around 3,000 proverbs. And today we're going to spend time uh, looking at a few of these. Okay, so go ahead and start turning to Proverbs chapter 3. So Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to start off in verse 13. It says, happy is a man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding, for she is more profitable than silver. <clears throat> so real quick, as we, as we continue to read, you're going to see these words, she and her. Uh, this isn't a person. It's referring to wisdom, okay? Wisdom is the, the she and the her, okay? So you can even read it as wisdom is more profitable than silver if you want. But just as we go, that way you know what, what we're reading. For she is more profitable than silver, and her revenue is better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you, can de- nothing you can desire can equal her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left, riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant, and all her paths peaceful. I know, I know sometimes uh, in life, us, uh, me, um, has anybody ever felt like God's ways, his path, it's just, it's burdensome, and it's, it's restrictive. I know at a young age, a lot of people see it that way, and probably y'all are, are with me on that. When you're younger, you see God's ways, his path is being just a burden, and it's restrictive, and it's, it's no fun. But actually, actually, it's freeing. God's ways are freeing, and they are pleasant, and they are peaceful, because it keeps you from enduring any, uh, you know, any more trouble than what life already has out there. Does that make sense? Like God's, there's already trouble out there, but God's path is peaceful. It is pleasant. It's freeing, and it protects you from just excess hurt and struggle. It says that in verse 18, she is a tree of, of life to those who embrace her, and those who hold on to her are happy. The Lord founded the earth by wisdom and established the heavens by understanding. By his knowledge, the watery depths broke open, and the, cloud, the clouds dripped with dew. Maintain sound wisdom and discretion, my son. Don't lose sight of them. They will be life for you, an adornment for your neck. Seniors, you're going to get a lot of advice from a lot of people. Uh, some of it's going to be for your financial future, or maybe it's your relational future, or academic future future of your job. You're going to get a lot of advice. Wisdom and discretion are essential to your spiritual future, okay? And that's what's most important, okay? They, it says they will be life for you, wisdom and discretion. And they'll be a dormant for your neck. So this is saying like godly wisdom is like it's out for everyone to see and it's beautiful and it's attractive like this elegant necklace, all right? It draws people in. I know lots of people in my life that are wise, right? Like when I was, a, when I was doing cabinets and, and trim and stuff, I, I learned from the older guys. Like playing golf, I like to learn from the older guys. Like 
they're just, you know, they're more wise. And, and, it's, and it's attractive and it's appealing. Like this necklace, like that's who I go to to learn, right? And so that's what this is saying is that it's a, these things are essential for your life. And that, man, it, it's, it's like the best type of jewelry you could wear, all right? Verse 23 says, Then you will go safely on your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. You will lie down and your sleep will be pleasant. Don't fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. Now, this isn't saying that wise people will never have difficulty. That's not what this is saying. It's very clear that there is difficulty. But what this is saying is that a person that is wise or a person that seeks godly wisdom, they won't fall into as many bad situations uh, that, that others would that, don't, that aren't wise. Okay? It's saying that when difficulty and trouble come, a wise person or a person that seeks God's wisdom is going to be able to handle it better and minimize the effects of it. So, wisdom keeps you from experiencing any more difficulty than what is already out there. Wisdom gives you peace. Wisdom is a trait that can help others as well. And wisdom leads us to Jesus. And wisdom leads us to share Jesus with others. If you look at verse 18, if you go back to verse 18, so like I said, wisdom leads us to Jesus and wisdom leads us to share Jesus with others. So when you look at verse 18, it says that wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her and those who hold on to her are happy. Does this tree sound familiar? This tree of life? Have you ever maybe heard that before? Maybe where else? In the garden. All right? So flip over to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. It says, the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So this tree of life, this is what, what we just read. This is wisdom. This is God's uh, like God, God is in their presence, but this is this tree of life is God sustaining power. Okay, this is God, basically like just Himself manifest and and supplying life. Okay, and then we have this other tree of good and evil, and we know what it is. And so we got two different things. We got two different things here, two different fruits, and so wisdom. Is different from just knowing good and evil. Wisdom is life-sustaining knowledge. And then when you flip over to in chapter 3, we see this again. So at this point, Adam and Eve have, uh, they've ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They've sinned. They've, when they disobeyed God. And so this is what God does in verse 22, Genesis 3, 22. Lord God said, since the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not reach out, take from the tree of life, eat, and live forever. So the Lord God sent him away from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove the man out and stationed the cherubim and the flaming whirling sword east of the Garden of Eden to guard the way to the tree of life. So when, when Adam and Eve... Uh, you know, God told Adam and Eve not to eat from this tree or they would die. You all remember that? Now, God meant a, a spiritual death, but a physical death was a byproduct of that choice as well. So when we read what we just read here where they sinned and they, they disobeyed God and God kicked them out, we can sit here and go, man, like, that was really mean of God for kicking them out of the garden. But we got to look at God's wisdom. All right? We got to look at God's wisdom. Adam and Eve ate the fruit in disobedience, which broke uh, the plan, it, and it brought in this brokenness and the sin and this death, and it put us at odds with God where we could not be with him anymore. All right? And in his wisdom, God didn't want 
Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of life and live like that forever. Okay, he didn't want them to be apart from him forever, be broken forever with no hope of rescue. He didn't want that. So he had to kick them out. He had to cut us off from that temporarily. See, he wanted to protect them from themselves. He wanted to save us from us, like a, like a good parent would do. So he had to banish them from the tree of life so that he could send Jesus. See, God banned them to keep death in the equation. Does it make sense? If they would have ate from the tree of life and lived forever, they're broken forever, apart from God forever. There is no death. They're just, they're just apart from God forever. And so God banned them to keep death in the equation because he had a plan. And God used that brokenness that we created to fix what we couldn't. God sent Jesus, and he used that variable of death to pay the bill that we owed. And then he defeated death by coming back to life. All so that we could be saved from our mistakes and sins. And our relationship with God would be restored. And access to this tree of life, this wisdom, opened up. Now, he could have left us there, broken and alone forever, but he didn't. And thank God he didn't. Without wisdom, we miss the beauty of God's plan. Without wisdom, we miss the beauty of God's plan for our lives. And we think that he's just a nope God, that he doesn't care about us, and that because he didn't do what we wanted him to do when we wanted him to do it, that he's just mean and doesn't love us. But sometimes God says no right now so that he can say, to some, so he can say yes to something else later. All right, seniors? Sometimes God says no right now so that he can say yes to something else later. We also get a, this tree of life reference in Revelation. So go to Revelation, chapter 22. So Revelation chapter 22, in verse 1. Now, as you're turning there, so, so John is getting a glimpse into uh, end times. Okay, he's getting a glimpse right here into a new earth and a new heaven, okay? And it says in, in chapter 22, verse 1, it says, Then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and of the Lamb, and down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations, and there will no longer be any curse. So, a couple of things. So first off, this river isn't like any river we've ever seen. You, you get it in, in a couple chapters before this that the, this new earth does not have water. Okay, So this river is not flowing from any body of water. What is it flowing from? The throne of God. So this life-sustaining power is coming straight from God. Always has. And it's this never-ending supply of life. And we have the tree of life there again. And the very thing that Adam and Eve were cut off from is now available. It's available to, to us and them. Everything is restored, and, and then it ends by saying that God's never going to have to judge sin again because everything's perfect. And then if you skip over just a little bit, um, well, one more thought on, on that. I know this is kind of <laughs> maybe a little gloom, but uh, the seniors have heard me say this quite a, quite a bit. But we're all going to die one day. I don't know if you knew that or not. But that clock's been ticking the moment that we were born. The moment you were born, that clock started ticking. And when that day comes, when that day comes, those that ask God for forgiveness and gave their life to Jesus here on earth will experience these things. See, in verse 14, so I'm still in Revelation 22, but verse 14, it says, Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. See, so God's wisdom heals and restores us through Jesus. And washing these robes is saying that we put our faith in Jesus. We've asked him for forgiveness, and we have washed those robes, and he has healed and he has restored us. All right? And if you believe, the, if you believe that here on earth, you'll experience these things. 
And we get a taste of that while still here on this side. But it's made complete in heaven. We will get to experience what Adam and Eve did for a short time, but then had taken away. And this isn't about a, a tree. Okay, it was never about a tree. It was never about the, it was never about the tree of good and evil, and it was never about the, this tree. This is, all, this is spiritual. All right? It was about obeying God. It's about following God. And Jesus, in this, so in, in Genesis, we're talking about a literal tree, and then here in Revelation, you can, you can make the argument that this is Jesus. Jesus is the tree of life. All right? For us today, like if we were to eat from this, this tree of life, it is to be lining up with Jesus. It is to be learning from Jesus. It is to be chasing Jesus. And like I said, if we choose to follow Jesus, if we wash our robes, God's amazing rescue plan is, is completed. And it will be completed. And his promise is kept. Seniors, godly wisdom is the best thing you could chase after. Because it keeps you from ex excess suffering and fear, but it leads you to Jesus. All right? Godly wisdom leads you to Jesus. And that's, it's so important for you to understand that for yourself, that, this, that Jesus is this tree of life. Always has been. Always will be. When we get to heaven, man, it's like, like I said, everything's restored. We sit here now, and we go, what in the world's going on? Right? Like, why is there so much hurt? Why is there so much brokenness? Doesn't God want to do something about it? And the answer is yes. He does, and he will. I don't have God's wisdom, so therefore I don't know, I don't know his timeline, and I don't know why. But I can trust that one day it's going to be restored. It's going to be fixed. And just like Scripture said, he's not going to have to judge sin anymore because it won't be a thing. That's the cool part about this last Scripture that we read. At this point in the future, Satan's already been defeated. Him and all his followers are defeated. And God has restored everything. And so this tree that we were cut off from that was life-sustaining and it was God's wisdom— and that we were apart from because of Jesus, we have access to. And again, it's not access to this tree. It's access to the source, Jesus. And through him, man, we get to have a relationship with God. Here, but then complete in heaven. We get access to God's wisdom. Here, complete in heaven. Does it make sense? And so, during this, this next uh, few minutes... These next few moments, I want you to do one of three things. If you have believed all of this for some time now, then I ask you to pray for those that don't. Maybe you know somebody. Maybe you don't. If you know that person, pray for them by name. If you don't, pray that God uh, opens your eyes to them. If you haven't asked Jesus for forgiveness and given your life to him, washing your robe, now's your chance. God doesn't want you to go another day without experiencing that life change. All right? He wants you back. That's why he sent Jesus. That's why he did what he did back in Genesis, so that he could send Jesus to die for you. Because he wants you back. And you can make that choice all on your own, either down here or where you're at. Somebody can walk you through it, or you can do it on your own. Families. Students, if we have students down here, I want you to rally around these seniors, pray for them. Pray that they will have godly wisdom and that they will share it with other people. So during this, uh, I'm going to pray, and during this moment, I, I want you to do one of those three things. All right? Father God, I just want to thank you for today. God, I just want to thank you for these seniors. God, thank you for their families, and thank you for uh, just allowing us to lead them. And I pray that we let them well. God, I pray that you direct their, their steps, that you would guide them, that their words would be your words, and that their heart would be your heart.
Father God, I just pray for the rest of us in this room that our job is not done discipling. Our job is not done sharing you with other people. And God, I just pray for you that godly wisdom that we would have the words and that we would know just what to say and that we would recognize it, recognize those moments and that we wouldn't pass them up because it matters. God, what, what happens to us spiritually matters way more than what happens to us physically. So God, I just pray that, uh, I just thank you for loving us and for sending Jesus. Thank you so much. Let me love you. In the name I pray.